Welcome back to Friday 15. With me in the studio today, for the second time actually on the program, is Jared Miller from Hanwha Vision America. Welcome again, Jared. Thanks for having me back, Dina. Okay, so today we're gonna to talk about how to make any camera smart. And the foundation of that conversation has to be camera analytics. Analytics is really the foundation of all that smart stuff. But I can already hear when we talk about analytics, and I've got to put this up right now, it's analytics ad nauseum. We hear it so many times, it's almost become tiresome. It's like vanilla ice cream every day. So why is this conversation different? Why, first of all, maybe say, why has the word analytics made us almost roll our eyes? I think the, the problem has been that historically, video surveillance manufacturers have made promises that were not exactly honest and didn't deliver in the way that the end user expected them to. And I think that as technology has progressed, we're finally in a position where we can give the end user what they thought they were getting 10 or 15 years ago. Okay, that's a very bold statement you just made that maybe we weren't as honest as I am, you know. Um, so when you say that, what wasn't working? What was promised and what was not delivered? Well, so when somebody who does what I do now would come in and talk to our sales team, they would say, these cameras can do motion detection. These cameras mm -hmm. can do object left behind, loitering detection, et cetera. The disingenuous part or the part where there was a disconnect with the technology mm -hmm. was that it was pixel-based analytics, meaning that the camera is looking for a pixel change on the scene. So where you have your virtual line, if the sun moves a little bit or a shadow is created, the camera is fooled into thinking that somebody has crossed this line. The end user in turn, gets an alert that says somebody's in my parking lot, somebody's mm -hmm. in my front door, when in reality, it was just an environmental change versus an actual person whom they're trying to detect. Uh-huh, so the actual foundation of the analytics was the technology couldn't actually deliver. Maybe that's what it was. And um, and supposedly now, you know, analytics is so 2019, it feels like, you know, now we're in 2024, it's really big data, accessible analytics. So something changed. Walk us through, how, how, how has that conversation changed? Well, through AI models and through, you know, both internally developed as well as external algorithms, the cameras are now trained to detect for a person or a vehicle. So all those analytics that I discussed a moment ago are actually, you know, better than nine out of 10 effective. So hmm. if I tell a customer, hey, we're gonna send you an alert when a car comes into your parking lot, we know that it's 93 percent effective that it will be a car not just an environmental change in scenery so mm -hmm. your intelligence and your alerts um, are more actionable now as well as you know not a hundred percent accurate but we're coming a lot closer to the promises we've been making for a long time mm -hmm. so it's not pixel in analytic out but pixel in some type of interpretation of what that pixel means um so i guess there's enough analytics at that foundation to interpret it as a person or not as a shadow, but as a, a line crossing or whatever the case is. And now you actually have these real accessible analytics that we can use. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today though, um, is a solution called Flex AI. And I know we're good to go into it, but the premise you like to say is that it's accessible. So until now we have had, there are programs out there, platforms out there, that do have that degree of accuracy and have delivered on their promises. Uh, I'm thinking, say, for example, BriefCam. Mm -hmm. So did, was BriefCam disingenuous? No, BriefCam yeah. is you know the market leader in what they yeah. do. And their back end works very, very, very well. Um, the problem is that the barrier of entry has been very high for your average consumer to get this level of technology up until now. Um, it's a premium product that provides a premium outcome, but it's not something that's affordable to your average commercial industrial business. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is making that accessible 
and the accuracy accessible because it's big data as opposed to little analytics or little pixels. So, and the premise is if you have a dumb camera, you can use mm -hmm. Flex AI. Go ahead, tell us what Flex AI is. So basically what we're doing is similar to what the brief cams, brief cams of the world are doing. We're injecting our artificial intelligence um, and processing and AI models into any OnVIF camera. So what that means is as an end user, you bought 100 cameras for your business three years ago. They're your standard, standard pixel-based uh, analytics. Obviously, like I said prior, that's not delivering what they maybe hoped they were going to be able to deliver. So we can now put that object detection as well as some attribute extraction into any OnVIF camera that's already been deployed. Um, or we can allow the end user to sort of choose their own adventure and train their own AI model in order to customize those analytics as per their business need. Okay, so just kind of stepping through that step by step. So Flex AI, what is it, a software? Is it a piece of hardware? What exactly is it? It's a piece of hardware that resides between the camera and the VMS that again is injecting that technology into that chunk of cameras. So it is selectable. It's not the model where all of your cameras need to be smart. Maybe a mm -hmm. business identifies that they have 12 cameras that they would like this technology in. They can use it on just those 12 cameras while the other cameras can still be the quote dumb cameras <laughs> that don't need the higher level of intelligence. Okay. So you, you put it, so it's a bit like an NVR, you put it somewhere like maybe next to your server or um, somewhere, wherever. How many cameras can it control? As of today, we yeah. have an eight camera box, but you can use multiple eight cameras. We have a 16 that should be available later this year as well. Okay. So if you identify maybe eight cameras on a parking lot or eight cameras on a some type of area that you want to have that type of high level, um, sophisticated, accurate, analytics, you can put this thing, Flex AI there and make that happen. Um, and then um, is it connected to the cloud? Like how do you actually control it? As of today, it would be on-prem, though we do have um, a cloud platform that we're launching soon, but that's for another conversation. So everything would be done on-premises. Um, if you're creating your own models, yes, that's technically done by feeding images through the cloud. Um, but it does reside at the customer site. Okay, so, um, but thinking about the actual application and what it can do differently to the old style analytics, think of an example. So how um, specific can it actually get? Let's think of an environment. Um, can you give some examples? Yeah, absolutely. So ultimately AI is looking for a true false model. So you're teaching it, this is something or it's not a something. So for example, a grocery store might want to know how many shopping carts they have in their parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, a hospital, I just met with a hospital a couple of weeks ago and they told me a story about a patient who was left in a wheelchair in the parking, oh. in the parking lot unattended. So they have a high level of interest in, we want an alert when a wheelchair is present for this amount of time so that we can go investigate the situation. Wow, okay. So let's think about the, that example, wheelchair in a par hospital parking lot. That's probably pretty common. Mm -hmm. Those people go and abandon the wheelchairs. Um, can it detect a person unattended in a wheelchair in a parking lot? Potentially. It would, as of today, I would say the highest level of accuracy is going to be um, a loitering analytic, meaning that the object is within this box, it's unmoved for a period of time, and that's programmable or accessible. Um, you know, in the winter, you probably would want to know if there's somebody in a wheelchair unattended for only a couple of minutes. Yeah. When it's warmer or in a warmer climate than we're in, maybe that's 10 minutes, but it's 100% end user driven. They create their own parameters. They tell us what's important. We shepherd them through that process. Cool. So that's really something different than here because it's how to train your dragon, how to train your AI, your flex AI. So this element of training that comes with AI and big data. So first of all, just walk us through that process. So um, if you want to say, I'm thinking say a manufacturing facility, they want to make sure that um, everyone's wearing bright yellow jackets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do they have to train that? 
Yeah, so that's probably one that you would have to train yourself. We do have some third party partners that already have developed AI models that are licensed so you can buy their license. The algorithm has already been perfected. Um, but those are still sort of in that pre canned environment where it's trying to be everything to everybody without being specific. So if you were to train your own model, um, you're basically feeding images of whatever you're trying to make the camera um, aware of. You know, we say a minimum of 10, but the more you feed, the more accurate it's going to be because of, you know, environmental variables or um, yellow looks like red or yeah. red looks like orange. Um, a wheelchair looks like a shopping cart. So the more you invest in creating your AI model, the more accurate it's going to be. Okay. So, um, so you get these flex AI comes with these pre-canned um, applications like, um, can you give us examples of Certainly. So what, yeah. what we already have available in our onboard and our P-series cameras, so that would be attribute extraction, which is male or female, top color, bottom color, hat, glasses, backpack, um, or in the vehicle side, color, make, model, of vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, those are available just plug and play. If you need a higher level of sophistication, you know, you're not just looking to categorize vehicles into a car, a truck, a bus, but you want to know, is it... Um, struggling on the vehicle side, but, you know, right. like we talked about shopping carts, wheelchairs, right. um, a, a tractor trailer in a logistics company mm. pulling up to the dock. Right. So, yes. So you want to get alerted when maybe a certain delivery truck comes in, a UPS truck or whatever. So you can train it on UPS trucks and probably that's probably quite defined, right? Because it's certain brown, a certain shape right. and um, 10 pictures, you put it into your model. And then it will alert you. Yeah, we say 10 is the minimum. So again, the more the better, the more accurate it's going to be. But again, that's something that we work directly with the end user as well as the integrator to sort of move them through that process to make sure they're getting what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we spoke about different kind of flavors of using AI in, a, in camera analytics. So you could go really expensive to these big platforms that take all the cameras and put it on this you know, AI, an enterprise grade AI platform. You could go accessible like this and choose a batch of cameras. Mm -hmm. um, but really, I guess the last question for you in this respect is, when should you actually rip and replace your dumb camera and, and not use Flex AI and actually put a smart AI enabled camera into it? That's going to vary by end user because we know life cycles and budget cycles um, vary by the organization. You know, if you're already considering replacing your cameras, we would obviously encourage you to just replace them with smart cameras. But for the end user who potentially bought 50 or 100 cameras two or three years ago when this technology didn't exist, you're probably going to want to hang on to those and get the full life cycle, you know, your seven to 10 years out of those cameras while still being able to enjoy the latest and greatest technology that the industry has to offer. Cool. All right. So let's finish off with some resources and recommendations. I'm going to put up over here. This is Hanwha Vision, okay? Flex AI, custom AI model trainer available now with from Hanwha. Um, and if you could just tell us a little bit about um, what to do, where to go, what to think about next. Well, I would encourage you if you're an end user to think about some problems your business is having that your current security or video surveillance or frankly data isn't solving for you today. Um, if you're an integrator, think about who you can evangelize this to. You know, we're making security, again, more accessible, lowering the barrier of entry for mass market appeal and giving technology to companies that maybe traditionally couldn't afford the more premium products. Right. So AI for the rest of us. <laughs> That's going to be my little placard for the weekend. <laughs> yeah. um, so thank you so much, Jared, for joining us on the program. Appreciate it. And Always a pleasure. And everybody, a good weekend. Thanks, Dina. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.